Hello and welcome back to Star Ladder Star Series. It is still day 10. We are here with the third game of the day. And Ten we will seconds. see Fnatic for the remaining three games that we have today. So first they're going to be up against Relax, Ten formerly known remaining. as Poseidon. The second game that we see from Fnatic today will be them up against Alliance. And last they'll be going up against Cupad. Now of course I will not be by myself for these matches. I am joined by two others. The first person is our stats man, it is Nahaz. And of course my co-caster is here as well, G-Advance. Welcome back. Hello again. Hello again, indeed. So, Fnatic, just to take a quick look. I mean, uh, they haven't had that many games, don't get me wrong. They are sitting at two games played, or at least two games listed. One is, of course, against 4FC. That was scheduled for earlier today. That was um, not played because 4FC disbanded. So, they have everybody got a death win for that one. And the other one was uh, earlier in the season. They won that as well. So, they're still unbeaten. 2-0, 6 points. On the side of Relax, they are sitting quite high up in the ranking. But they've already played 7 games. 4-1. Three losses. Not bad. Not bad at all. But they are edging towards the amount of losses that you can have. Like, the max amount of losses you can have, kind of, to still make it to the playoffs is about four. So they're edging to that. So they can't really afford to lose too much more games if they still want to have a chance to make it to the playoffs. But we'll see how they do up against the uh, Giants. Fnatic. I am I'm definitely curious to see how Fnatic does. I mean, they have been on a fantastic run lately. Yeah, Fnatic have been doing really, really well for themselves. They've just eked out, like, second place, Fnatic's though, in every yes, tournament. Yes. I feel bad for them, because they've done so, so well, and then gone up against teams that were just on fire for that game, or that series, and just crushed them. Before, they had to go up against VG in the uh, EMS, and I can't remember what they who they were beaten by in the last one at DreamHack, but oh, no. they've come second mostly. Yeah, it was Na'Vi. They've come second mostly. The only criticism I can have for Fnatic right now is that No Tail should not play Sand King. That's a uh, confirmed <laughs> don't do it. Because it's awful. He's a great player. He's a fantastic player. He's, As far as I'm concerned, I still think he's the best player on Fnatic. But he can't play Sand King. You know what he is <laughs> at, at least? All. Like, he is the loudest one on Fnatic. Yeah, I saw that. He was extremely <laughs> loud, which is not what you see, because you see him, and he's like, I mean, he's like short. He's also the shortest like, stuff Fnatic. He looks, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, you know, he, he looks really young and stuff. And then you saw him at EMS, and he was like the loudest anyone has ever been, ever. Yeah, every LAN, he is he is the loudest. He's also the one that you could hear in the audience, if you're like at DreamHack. So that's, uh, yeah, Fnatic, therefore, are... Always a very entertaining team to watch on LAN, especially. And I think that they have gained a lot more fans. Also because yeah, of that. But just, they have so much spirit coming off from them. So much personality in that, you know, you, you just can't help but to like them. There's no other way. So I'm curious to see yeah, how they I'm... do here because apparently there's no honey. Five they are playing with the standard unless... And no, that, that is, is Hani. Honey. Honey. He is was it actually Hani? He, he was playing pubs under that name earlier. Oh, okay. And Good that's like, know. I think it's something pretty rude in oh. Finnish or something. I don't know. We'll I just call remember. him Hani. That's good. Yeah, we'll call him Hani. Yes. It's, I, I know what it is, but I don't want to say it on stream. Ten seconds remaining. Okay, that, that, then that's good enough reason for me to not to hear it. So, Five yeah, for Fnatic, they have banned out, of course, the Elder Titan removed. Pugna as well as Bristleback and Night Stalker. For relax, you're doing fine. Uh, Io band out. That's a specially tailored band, especially for Fnatic. Invoker band, which is quite interesting as well, but also tailored against Fnatic, I should say. And Alchemist and Lifestyle now as well. But Fnatic, I mean, they still pick up an Aegis Prophet and an Enchantress as their first two. We still have a Luna in the pool, and the pushing potential that Fnatic already has is pretty damn scary. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting how it's totally fine now for relax to ban two heroes specialized to Fnatic, which is Invoker and Wisp. Wisp, the only other team that I can think of that anyone plays uh, is DK. They're the only other team that I can think of that play it. And I don't think I've seen Invoker played by any other team for quite a while, really. So I think it's interesting that this patch has led to a point where teams have their very own particular style. And you can afford to ban against style rather than before like, do you remember TI2 where it's just like, ban Lycan, you know? Mm -hmm. We've we've always had a hero like that, where there's always been a hero you need to ban and relax? Wow, that is an odd pick. 
Yeah, I hope for them. That's a bit of a pocket stretch there coming out for them. I mean, Ricky is a pretty decent hero up against the uh, Enchantress. Also, of course, up against the Weaver if you can get the smoke up, which you should now with the change, of course. You can pop the smoke uh, while in Infis. Ten but before he shakushes away, if you have a Diffusal Blade and all that, the only real Five trouble that he has, remaining. and that's actually quite a big one, is that he's fairly easy to counter. Just get a gem. You'll see him. He yeah. won't be having as big of an impact as he otherwise would. And of course, he needs a bit of a, a good first start as well. But if Fnatic is on the ball, which they normally are, they will be prepared for him when he leaves or when he reaches level 6, I should say. Yeah, Fnatic are a very, very organized team. They've been together forever. I mean, they're ex Hontrash. So they know how to deal with issues like this. And Ricky is, as you said, he's very, very simply countered. But if he isn't countered, I mean, I'm sure there's some newer players in the chat who have experienced the horror that is a, an uncountered Ricky, which will just kill you yep. all day over and over again. They have the chance, they Radiant will. Team We're still missing a mid-hero pickup. Fnatic actually is the one to ban out the Puck, which is interesting because I wouldn't, be su wouldn't have been surprised to see Puck being uh, picked up by Fnatic, as we know that Hani is a very scary Puck, but um, no, they, they, they leave it in, or they, they remove seconds. it themselves. Now, Puck is uh, not specifically a counter to a lot of Five heroes, but which hero do you think they counter? Like, is, are they going to go for Queen of Pain? To pick. I wouldn't personally want to go for a Queen of Pain in a game versus Ricky. Yeah. If you do, you have to get a BKB up pretty damn fast. So, it'll be interesting to see what they pick up here. There's a lot of options. I think anybody that who can just um, turn around in the smoke cloud and be like, what, what are you going to do? is a really essential hero. It'll be interesting to see how relaxed lane this as well, because I believe they are one of the teams that have played the solo mid Clockwork. Mostly we see Clockwork as, a, as an off laner. He is capable as a solo mid, and Fnatic actually go pretty all in with a Magnus here, so that's yep. a relatively tanky hero. And I have to say, I mean, it could definitely work out, I and mean, they don't know really yet which hero they're going to be up against. We actually also have seen Venomizer solo mid coming out a couple of times. Not from Tema Wild though, so I'm still expecting the uh, the mid to be picked up. But Enchantress, I feel like there's a lot of weight in her shoulders to delay the game so that Weaver and Magnus can farm up their Blink Dagger and their Mana Boots. And Ten. she and Rubik, I'm not quite sure if, if they can do that, because Venomizer and Visage are just Five such a strong combination of supports as well. I think that Relax has... Got a, are, I think the Relax is pretty comfortable time. in their draft. Basically. Yeah, I agree. And if they do pick up, for instance, a Queen of Pain or one of those uh, heroes that Tame My Wild flourishes on, it'll do really well versus Magnus. It's one of the hardest matchups for Magnus. And if I'm honest, I'm a little bit confused about the Magnus pickup because I mean, obviously it gives him an extremely strong AoE teamfight initiator. What? How does that fit into Fnatic's draft? They have Weaver... That's no real AoE other than the Swarm, which is negligible. Rubik can throw out a couple of spells, maybe one that he's stolen. Other than that, there's really not a huge amount of stuff to go with the Magnus ulti here. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see. Of course, RP is very, very useful versus Ricky, but it looks like they're actually going to pick up Dragon Knight rather than a Queen of Pain or something. So, something just that little bit more reliable. It would be really hard for the Weaver to bring this guy down as well. Talk about a blast from the past. The Magnus Dragonite mid matchup. We've seen that so much when bottle crowing was still very, very viable for those two, but uh, a lot less because bottle crowing got nerfed. But I'm expecting uh, these two to be pretty happy to be up against each other. It's a fairly even matchup. Both should be able to get their levels, should be able to get their farm. Uh, of course, also because it's an even matchup, it will not be even. It will be very skill dependent. And there's going to be a lot of emphasis on the rotation of supports. Which brings me back to the Enchantress, which is of course a very good hero to be aggressive on early on, as we saw in the previous game as well, even though in the end it didn't really work out, but you know, the thought is there for sure. Uh, Visage and uh, v Venomancer definitely can make a difference as well though, of course, there is a Skur, there is an escape for the Magnus, who is indeed a bit shy of his portrait, but doesn't matter. Perhaps he's afraid to show his overbite, but... Um, I kind of think that, I mean, with the score, if you're guild and you still screw out, you're still going to be very slow afterwards, and I think you're still probably going to die. The soul assumption comes out. We'll take a look, though. Let's take a look at who is playing what, as we have got Fnatic on the Dire side. We've got No-Tail playing his Enchantress, Era will take on the Weaver, Fly will be on the Rubik, Trixie 
on the nature's profit and last but not least it is indeed honey just confirmed as well on the Magnus and I'll leave uh, yeah. relax for you on the side of relax we do have KSI he's gonna be picking up the Venomancer for his team uh, he's on the support. Shacklow is going to be on the offlane clockwork. The solo mid for the team is going to be Tamai Wild. He's going to be picking up the Dragon Knight going mid. And the uh, the safe lane combination for the team, it's going to be Nexus. He'll be on the Ricky. And the support for him is going to be Dread. He'll be picking up the Visage. Yeah, I'm expecting KSI to indeed still rotate towards that bottom lane as well, by the way, because, I mean, I don't think that the yeah, clockwork kind of needs help, and I don't think they can actually do anything anyways. Uh, will be a very tough one, as I will... Switch back the Hudson because it wasn't begins. really that good. But uh, but yeah, Shacklow on his uh, clockwork. We've seen him, I think, yesterday or the, or maybe Friday on this one as well, and he was actually doing quite okay with this one. So I'm curious to see how it goes, and if they can uh, can make it happen. Actually, thinking about that, they actually did that yesterday. They the game that we saw of Relax yesterday lasted for seventy minutes. Yep. Yeah, that one that was, was a uh, that was yeah. a long game. That was a very long game. That was with you too. So yes, yeah, so we're we're gonna see if they can maybe yeah. maybe make it a bit faster this game, or if Fnatic can make it a bit faster. Of course, I don't think that Fnatic would mind it though if it is a seventeen minute game because they do have the split push of the Nature's Prophet, which is uh, kind of nice to have. As Fly already zoned Shackle yeah. a bit here. They're working with a very, very strong late game team, this team. Uh, they have extremely strong team fight, which of course always scales with RP, is always useful in the late game. They have a Weaver and they have Nature's Prophet, both heroes who are very, very capable at split pushing, which is something Fnatic are known for. It'll be interesting to see how they do this. I think their early game is a fair a bit weak though, and they're going to have to get maybe an early tower on the top lane just to give them that extra gold so that they're not quite as vulnerable during the early game. Yeah, and, and, and again, a lot of pressure on the, on the Enchantress, I find. She did pick up a, or he could pick up, no, he did not, yes, he did. A troll summoner, well, sorry, didn't see him there, sitting behind the towers. And he instantly smokes up, so let's see if he can pick up the Dragonite. Dragonite already getting harassed a bit, he's very low on mana. His bottle is coming in the Courier, but I think it's going to be too late. Better yet, there might actually be a chance that the courier will get picked up on the way back. It is still only one and a half minutes in. The llama will be seen, and this should be a courier snipe for No-Tail. Luckily, at least for the DK, there will not be uh, any bottle anymore in the courier, but nonetheless, that is a big blow to Tame My Wild, because he... I, I said this, like, it's, uh, it's a bottle crow matchup. Hey, exactly, this is a very, very rune-dependent matchup, and... He's just lost his bottle for, uh, or the ability to bottle grow for a very long time. And Shacklow actually here might go on no tail. Yep. He is going to try for him here, but he doesn't have battery assault. No battery assault, no kills. Get forced back and no tail just pops the heal and runs himself out just fine. He's got a clarity also to help heal him back up. I mean, the smoke gank didn't get a first blood, but getting a courier in this case, it just completely secures the lane for the Magnus, I think. Unless there's going to be yeah, a very two good guy support are. to rotate the bottle around, which would be kind of awkward. Yeah, generally these two heroes are pretty much even. I think I'd give the edge very slightly to Magnus because he does have a pretty big base damage advantage. Uh, at this point in time it's around 10, so I uh, know it's a little bit less now, it's around 6. So yeah, this just makes the latch up just that little bit harder to Fertain My Wild and he can't bottle crow so he needs to get the next rune. But that's up in a minute's time and Fnatic do have good heroes to try and control that. Yeah, his Dread just thrown out a soul assumption that didn't really do anything. Trixie is pretty damn low, though. I mean, he's going back in the jungle, which is great for him, but he gets scouted out. If he gets ganked upon, I mean, Nexus, I feel like he could. But he would miss quite a few last hits for it, so we'll see. We have a teleport from KSI. Venomancer has got a Gale. Major Prophet does have, does have mana to TP out, so that's good for him. And it looks like he might be forced to as well. There's Gale right there. Yeah, there he goes. Back to base with him. No yeah, smart move from stuff. Trixie there. Really uh, dangerous to jungle in that area, but he knows if he can see one of the supports in the lane, which he could for most of that, that he isn't going to get killed by either of them solo, because neither of them just have quite enough burst damage. It takes a little bit too much for the Visage to get the, uh, enough uh, points in the solo assumption to actually kill him off instantly, and the Venomancer, it's all damage over time, so he can just TP out like he saw. So yeah. smart move from him. None of the three heroes here on this offline have any way of interrupting a teleport. The interrupts only would come from the Clockwork or Dragonite, and both, of course, are on different lanes. It's Tima Wild 
tried to go for a rune but did not get it. It is uh, a rune that got denied, I believe, by the uh, enchantress script, by the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Shacklo went to go down there, and he was spotted out going down there, so the enchantress creep just immediately denied it. They knew it was going to get there before the Magnus, so it's well worth doing, because like we said before, the Magnus can just bottle crow through this. DK, he has two options. He can either sit in the edge of experience range, deal with the fact that he's not going to get any mench in the way of last hits, or he can move back to base. And neither of those are good options. No, he Radiant cannot move back to base at this point, so he's gonna have to wait for the courier, which is up again in five Radiant's seconds, so that's good for him. In the meantime, though, Fnatic has taken good use of the time they had. They have taken down a tier one tower top. No deny possible, Radiant's and as you mentioned, they need fallen. that early uh, kind of gold advantage, and they, they get it, so that's great for them. We do, however, have a Ricky that is still free farming, though, and this Ricky, he's got treads, he's got a poor man's shield. The Rikis don't really need that much to make uh, make something happen on the map. The only thing they do need is the lack of wards on the enemy team. And we'll see if he can make something happen. Still, the push continues on the top lane with three people. That does mean that they're lacking a bit of farming experience. Or at least they're having to share it. So they don't get as much as, for example, Fnatic would get, right? Or that, or Relax would get at the moment. But if they get a tower, they get another big burst of gold for that tower and they will get ahead again and actually they they're forcing three heroes to sit around here on this uh, on this lane as well with Shacklo still being level four level three on the Veno level three on the visage oh in comes the Gale Shacklo almost dead though yes he will go down that's the first blood that wasn't spilled just yet era might be going down as well he does not have level six runs himself out soul assumption comes in though and he'll drop a one-for-one -one trade that does favor Relax. In the meantime, No Teal doesn't have enough mana for a heal. The tower is still bashing on him and he will end up dropping as well. Another pickup. KSI. Can he get himself fly? Fly out of mana as well. But at least the creep wave comes in and KSI does not want to die of that. And he has to run from this Magnus. Dragonite here as well. Dragonite. He might be the one that Honey will try to RP. He does have an RP but gets for his back. Slowed by KSI as well as he has got that poison sting. No mana for wards though for the extra slow. Oh, double damage rune that would be filling up his bottle but he's not going for it. They're still trying for this. The ward's slowing him down, and I don't don't know why Team Wild is still chasing that, because this is something that KSI can do by himself if more wards fall. Never mind. Hello, Trixie. And they turn it around. They should be able to get this pick up here. They should be making 3-2. And actually, Era coming in, not taking the last hit, but at least taking some of, ex of the experience. The dive was too long. And, uh, well, in the end, slightly still in favor, I feel, for Poseidon, because I did pick up that Weaver. But the first blood does go to Fnatic, and they do get a three, or two for three. Yeah, really, really extended engagement there, and they didn't just take the first tower, they took the second tower as well, and they stopped them getting the deny on it. So overall, I would say that's generally worth it for Fnatic, because they did manage to pick up now their Midas on the uh, on Era, and the Nature's Prophet is going to be working towards his as well. One interesting thing to see there is that Era possibly made a bit of a mistake. Uh, you could see the Soul Assumption coming in for him, and he did have a salve on him, so he could have maybe tried to pop off the salve, try and save himself, but it was just one of those little things, you know? Yeah. I'm being nitpicky. Well, we'll never know if he'll be able to, to live through it or not, how, how much uh, it actually would have done, but Era probably thinking, you know what, I'm gonna die anyway, so he didn't even try. We do have a yeah. bit of a uh, counter push coming in right now from uh, Relax, but I mean, if there's a Nature's Prophet there, they, he will be able to pull the creep wave back behind the tower, so this is gonna be a very slow push. They only have the Venomance Awards to help them out, which is okay-ish. Oh, actually, they have Dragonite here as well. Why not just pop Dragon Form? Well, great for that. That's actually helping a lot, that poison. Sticking onto the tower. They do need a bit of a creep wave, though, but it's coming back in. Oh, nicely done. The, the Treons actually delay the creep wave a lot here, and therefore waste a lot of the Dragon Form on the Dragonite. And gives time for Fnatic to uh, maybe monster up a counterattack here. Teleport's coming in for the Weaver as well. They're looking for blood. They're out for it. This is really, really aggressive from them, and I don't think it, it's needed. They have two Midas's up pretty soon. They could afford to sit back and take things, maybe take the mid-tower instead, and whether they really want to die of these sorts of heroes, uh, heroes like Venomancer, Visage, is pretty oh. dangerous, but they are going to take out Tame My Wild. Yeah, they are. Sick Chargers won't keep them up, or will they? Nope. Enchantress the Centaur picks it up. One for zero. Ricky not able to make anything happen, which, you know, he wanted to, but... Doesn't do it. There's no detection coming out yet from anybody on Fnatic, as in no sentries, no dust. But he's not taking advantage from that one. He's actually uh, gonna see it. Oh, I support teleporting out. Oh, wow, Magnus. Honey, why did you come in from the wrong side? 
He didn't even get his RP off. We still have Nexus hanging around here. Still no detection, but he's not going for it. He really wants to. Now he goes for no-till. One more hit needed. Doesn't get it though. No-till doesn't have enough mana to teleport. Or he has enough mana to teleport out. Doesn't have enough mana for a seal. So he gets himself out. Nobody ended up dying. On the, apart from Hani. And on the other side, nobody apart from the Dragonite. So I guess it's a fairly even trade with no tower going down. But I feel like... Relax could have made more out of that one if Nexus was a bit more aggressive. I think he was just very Dyer's scared for possible detection. Under yeah, he was really, really scared there. That's one of those times where you really need to be checking the enemy inventory. It's especially important on a hero like Ricky because if you're caught out of position, if you're not able to go in Viz, you'll just die. You just disappear as a hero. Whereas if you are able to go in Viz, it's very possible that you can pick off support Dyer's heroes quite quickly and with a bit of help, you can pick off enemy carries as well. And one interesting thing I'd like to point out in this is if we look at the DK right now, his most recent item that he's picked up, a belt of iron strength, uh, or belt of giant strength. On the Magnus, he's uh, about halfway to his blink dagger, he has arcane boots. If he hadn't have died there, he might even have it by now. So there's a significant difference between the Magnus and the DK right now, which is pretty worrying for relax. Yeah, and that's not only towers either. I mean, there's a two towers difference, of course, but that's just... Last hits, just that simple. Tame my wild. Perhaps he, I mean, he has got treads now if he wants to. I mean, they just really need some towers to get them back up on track, to get their core items up. We do have Nexus doing really well in terms of net worth. He's sitting second highest, only just a little bit behind the Weaver, who's got a Hand of Midas, of course. But we haven't really seen him in action, and it looks like he wants to farm up his Diffusal Blade before he actually tries something, which, you know, it's... It's nice and all, but I'm not sure. I feel like he could have already done more, but perhaps, I mean, they have a plan with it. They have uh, they have the, the draft in hand. They are the professional players, so we're, we're going to have to trust on them knowing what's best for them, but we'll see how, how this Ricky uh, pays out in the end. For now, he's got his second Blade of Lacrosse, so his Diffusal Blade won't be that slow anymore. Yeah, he's going to get his defusal relatively soon, but I have to agree with you, really. He possibly could have gone for a couple kills ahead of his Visage and a Venomancer in his lane versus an Nature's Prophet who, as we saw, was playing re really, really aggressively. If he wants to have his defusal blade to be able to pick off solo kills, but there's no reason why he can't at least harass this Magnus out of the lane or try and get some kills on uh, some, you know, squishier supports and stuff with a bit of help. And so far, he's pretty much not tried anything but farming and he's actually pretty scared of the Magnus here I guess he knows somehow that the sentry wards down here yeah I think so too and uh, we just had Tamer while trying to go for a bit of a push uh, in the end all he gets is a bit of damage to the tower and fly stealing dragon form so that's a pretty neat spell to, to steal as the sentry ward goes down mid as well so it looks like Fnatic wants to make a, wants to uh, start out by fighting mid and perhaps uh, force also Ricky to come in Telekinesis coming out, Tame out Wild, he might be in some trouble. Dragon Tail, still up on No Tail, who gets nuked by the Vizic, still has an Age of Attendance. Can they nuke him down in time? Yes, they can. In comes the RP, though, up on two, one already dead. Dread will be the second, two down. And the Familiar is trying to run for that one. That is a big fight, two on two in the, in the end, but still fight taken by Fnatic, and they will take their prize, which is a tier one tower middle. The fortification still comes out. But no extra rotation coming in from Relax, so they're gonna have to, uh, Relax has got to have to say goodbye to that tier 1 tower. We have got no tower taken in return. No extra control taken in return for Relax, not even a tier 1 bottom, even though that one was very close. Yeah, and during that fight, Fnatic's era actually went down. It appears to me to be so low to the clockwork. I didn't really catch what was happening, but I clicked on him after he died, and he died somewhere around here. And the clockwork was the only other one in that area, so... Uh, don't you? Have you? To, you have to ping. Here, first, you have to, like, pinging is what I see on the minimap. Ah, there. Drawing yeah, he died in this area. sort of area. So it must have been, he must have got himself caught in clockwork's cogs uh, without having the, uh, the chance to use his time lapse up, which is kind of a really bad mistake for him. And one of the issues with going with this really early Hand of Midas on Weaver is if you don't keep on farming really fast with it, you end up having no HP at this point. He's working with 777 HP. That's hardly anything. Yeah, he is still the highest farm tier on the map. That's also, of course, partly sitting in the hand of Midas that doesn't pay off yet until about 10 to 15 minutes from now. 
And it looks like Nexus wants to try and go for him. The hookshot comes in again. In comes a smoke. Thou shall not time lapse, they say. And they should be able to kill him off. There we go. Killing spree. And all they needed was a hookshot. Or at least cogs and the smoke. No way of getting out of that one. Good pickup for Relax. I mean, they're still two kills ahead. They're loop losing map condition. Wow. What am I saying here? They're losing... Uh, I have no idea anymore. Map condition. <laughs> it's fine, though. <laughs> <laughs> they're losing ground. They're losing ground. Map control. There we go. Map control. I don't know why it works. It's fine. Their map it's, is in a it, bad condition. Oh, yeah. Bad we'll call it that. When you say that, it reminds me of um, that really long game where uh, all the particles started messing up and stuff. Yeah. And like just the map was like exploding by the end and yep. nobody had a clue why for like ages. And I remember, I remember someone told me the other day that it was to do with there having been too many particles or something. I don't even know. I don't understand these sorts of things. The game went on for too long. As we have a Roshan attempt here at Fnatic. Well, I say attempt, but this is just a fairly easy uh, pick up, I'd say. Level 1, untouchable. We'll allow Noto to tank a bit up. He does have his nature's attendance, so he should be fine. Doesn't look like Relax knows it just yet. I feel like they have an idea right now, but it will be too late to still do anything against. Weaver already has picked up the Aegis, so right now, Relax, they cannot really go in anymore. And actually, they have to be careful here if they get picked off. Yeah, they will back off. They don't even get anything in return, not even the tower again. KSI is trying to keep the bottom lane split pushed out by with his wards, but he is going to have to run from this as well because in comes everybody of Fnatic. They rotate bottom, which is the last lane where still tier 1 tower is standing for relax themselves. But I think that Fnatic just wants to take it down. Yeah, relax are going to be trying to find a little bit of a kill off here. Nexus was actually behind them the whole time. But even with them scouting out the Roshan twice there, they fired uh, rockets in uh, once slightly earlier and then again just after the Roshan ended and they still didn't decide to go for that fight. Yeah, they will be able to pick up the clockwork. Or yes, they should. Flare comes out from the uh, from the Rubik, was that? No, no just uh, just the last hit from the Nature Prophet Treants. Tier 1 tower does oh, drop. Oh, Rubik has stolen hookshot though. Oh, and they're gonna go in. The smoke still comes just in case. Let's see if Honey actually can make something happen. He does have his blink dagger, but it gets interrupted by the illusions. And from the side comes the sprout. Tamar Wild might be in some trouble. And gets solo RP'd. We'll have his... At least his Hannah Midas bot. But yes, he'll die for sure. Two pickups for Fnatic and a tower. They do lose their tier 1 mid, which is the first tower that they lose. But a worthy trade once again, as they're now 7,500 gold ahead. 2k experience ahead, which is really not that much, but there is only, like, there's no kill difference. So, just creeps, so this is already quite a, quite a bit ahead, considering Radiant's there are no kills difference right now. Perhaps, though, Relax can take something top. Never mind, they have to, f they are already forced bottom. Yeah, they've already been forced to run away to this. Trixie is doing real brutal pain for them. He think he's going to go down to this, though, but... Shaklo just tried to kill Steel by looks of it. <laughs> the battery it's it's not a KS, it's a kill secure. Kill secure it's different, sorry. obviously. Well it's fine. I mean this is the time where Nexus is indeed the one to to pull this back in hands of relax. He is He's got a he's got a lot of weight on his shoulders indeed. I, he has his diffuse blade, that was his first charge that he used. It's very difficult for Ricky in this game though, because normally you know, for example, in a pub you try to find people and that are by themselves that you can take down. But Fnatic is just grouping up a lot, as you can see. The smoke actually gets revealed. They know Nexus is around there. The dust still reaches him, and he will get picked up for it as well. Flying with the zip. Picks him up. That is yeah. another death. And that is actually the first time that Ricky dies. A little bit of a misplay from the Ricky there. With the uh, the way the new uh, invisibility works, he, you, he can just uh, defuse it yourself, and the dust would immediately be purged off and you don't become visible. So he could have made his way away from that, probably just panicked after two dust immediately came off and he walked into three smoked heroes. So he could have got away from that kill though. So a little bit unlucky for him. And not fast enough on the fingers as he also picked up a recipe for a Hannah Midas. I guess he feels the pressure, but that would be the fourth Hannah Midas. Oh my God, everybody has got a Hannah Midas on the side of Relax. The recipe of Visage is already in the courier or, or in his base. I really am doubtful so if they can reach it, though. Yeah, they picked up a Hand of Midas on the Dragon Knight as well, which, I mean, it leads me to believe that Relax have given up on their game plan, which was, you know, to take things relatively early, 
to, to gain themselves an advantage and then go into the mid game and have the DK and the Ricky just pick people off. The same goes for the clockwork. They have really good heroes for picking people off. They even have Visage families, but they haven't managed to put themselves in a state where they can really do that for, to Fnatic. So their game plan from this point on is just farm and hope, which is not exactly a game plan as much as an emergency plan. Yeah, and they're turtling potential. Ooh, Nexus, there he defuses himself. There Central we go. Still goes down the run, Nexus. He's fine. Unless another dust comes out and another Central Ward comes out. That's for sure. The telekinesis. Now he dies. Well, that was something that he couldn't get away from fast enough. Unless he ran a different way. Yeah, that and way. that's why you buy Sentry Wards and Dust. Because you will need both of them. And that is a perfect situation to show exactly how you need both of them. Because the Ricky, I mean, this time he did manage to defuse a little uh, bit it off but it wasn't able to help him and in the mid lane looks like they're gonna go on tame my wild but nice use of visage familiars yeah and nice dragon too as well the rp got stopped in his tracks perhaps you still want to do it though he can if he wants to but it's not needed anymore not the dragon too that's profit with the right click no hope that is the two main cores the two the two highest farmers on relax picked off in a matter of seconds and I mean, yes, they've all got Hand of Midas's. That is great. I want I, every time I say Hand of Midas's, I feel like I should say either Hands of Midas or Hand of My D. I don't know what the multiple well, like plur plural Hand of Midas's is. Well, Midas is a, a person, right? It's named after m literally Midas. So you, it would be Hands? A, the plural of Midas would be. Midas, because you don't... Or would it be Midas's? Yeah, I think it would be my. I don't know. Or Hands of Midas. I know how you... I know to, like, to write it, but I don't know how you would actually say it. Because you would write it, you would just put Midas, and then an apostrophe, and that would be it. Yes. Or Hands of Midas. Multiple hands. Like that. Yeah. Hands of Midas, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. See, Nahaz is always there to just catch us and carry us through. Well, their turtle potential, which is what I was coming to, is just not that great. They've got familiar, or they, yeah, well, they've got familiar. It's not really that great of a turtle thing, but they could use it. But most of all, Venomancer. He is the one that's supposed to turtle this. Now, the main deal with Venomancer in this game is that, yes, he can place his wards, and it takes some time to set them up. And then, right, but you have all eight on the lane, that's great. As uh, Trixie you might actually die for the second time in a row here on the top lane. Nexus, Telekinesis though, Dragon Tail comes out from Fly, and that's gonna be Ricky dead instead of Trixie. Well, that happened. Your fate is mine. But, yeah, uh, Nexus is gonna be really upset about that one. That yes. was a kill that he really, really wanted, and he's just given away uh, that little bit more gold, that little bit more map control. And the whole time Ricky is dead, Fnatic basically can do what they want, because nobody on the side of Relax, other than Ricky, can actually get kills anymore. But the, the like the the, sorry, the point that I was coming to was like you have sorry to, if you now said it's okay because uh, there was a kill happening but um venomancer if you have your war rewards all placed somewhere that's great but then you've got nature's prophet on the other side and he'll be split pushing so you'll have your rewards placed on only one lane while you're getting pushed on two so that's the that's the only real turtle thing that they can do and wonder if they can hold on long enough for their Midas to pay off and I'm kind of my hands of Midas and then yeah. We'll see. Yeah. The issue with going hand of Midas in this to just turtle is well, you can be Midasing a creep every now and again, but if Fnatic take the entire map, they can farm everything. Like you were saying, the Nature's Prophet can split push one lane, Era can maybe split push another, Fly, uh, Harney, and No Tail can just go jungle or something, or they can go to other lanes. They really don't need to, you know, try and end the game right now. Oh, well, Fnatic apparently they are, uh, in a rush. I mean, they have another game after this one. Uh, Fnatic is, of I course, mean, why not? You know? Yeah, if they can. I it's mean, always more fun them. trying to uh, to go up to the base. I mean, even if you're a professional player, I think part of things sometimes is still like you don't want to sit around and play like an hour of fun. No, nobody enjoys that. If even you if would it's enjoy you know, that, you'd quote unquote your Warcraft. job. Exactly. So, yeah, they don't want to farm. They want to fight. We want them to fight too. I mean, you know, I don't mind that they're aggressive. Yeah. 
And that's actually an item that's really rarely picked up on Dragonite, but actually synergizes with the hero surprisingly well. He gets that little bit of extra regen from his Dragon's Blood, gets a nice amount of strength and armor from this, so it doesn't hurt him as much as it would other heroes. And of course, if he's uh, if he goes into his ranged form, then he can hit from really far away, which for a strength hero is really unusual. So I like this item choice. It's very cost effective is one thing, and that's something they need because they're falling behind. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm coming back to the Midas part. Because if Midas is a person, or name, or something, isn't both teams have one Midas that they can have hands Dyer's from, top tower is under or that yeah. they take hands from, then I guess if you're looking at the lineup of Relax, their Midas, the person that they take the hands Sean from, must have been some kind of Buddha or something because he has so many Radiant hands. Structures are fortified. That's true. I mean, there's seven hands of Midas on, on it, and as far as I know, the whole legend of Midas, he only had like two hands. So. <gasps> what about next patch? Each team may okay. only build a maximum of two hands of Midas. So that the Midas is no longer an octopus man. Yes. And we don't have to see Hand of Midas spammed by every team. I kind of like that idea. That's that I like that. I'm in favor. I would it would be very difficult in pubs. <laughs> but no me, no me. And then yeah, you know, that doesn't really work. <laughs> no, I think it'll be nerfed in some sort of other way. Generally, Ice Frog doesn't like to limit you in in doing things. But yeah. if something's overpowered, he'll like. Generally, he nerfs like stats and stuff like that, or like side gives um, other issues to picking things up. So maybe he'll just make Midas more expensive. I wouldn't be surprised if that was it. I like called their there, career there's relax. There's a llama <laughs> called Relax. <laughs> awesome. And what does the writing on their logo mean? Oh, they are of the... Oh. Epi asks the best questions. Like, <laughs> he just asked what one thing said, and then looked at another thing that says exactly the same thing. <laughs> and it's like, I don't understand. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just like he looked at it and was like, oh. well, these two words are exactly the same. Nope. They must mean different thing. Is it actually the same? It has to be right. Whoa. Honey. Honey! I'm gonna be calling you out if you do that, if you if you mess that up. I hope so much he messes it up. I hate to see this in pubs also. It's like, dude, be careful. This frustrates me. Yeah, or if it's somebody on the enemy team then and they're like beating you and then it's just infuriating because you're like, screw you. I could do that too. I'm just not going to try it because I'm losing. So if I use my RP or whatever, we like lose the game. So shut up. Stop it. Stop taunting me. That's what this is right now. This is basically mind games. I mean, there's a certain amount of gamesmanship in every game. These people playing are not robots. So doing stuff like that, it, it puts the frustration on Relax. Because I mean, what are they doing right now? They're sitting inside of their base. Occasionally using Hands of Midas and oh, Dragon's wow. Breath. Honey, he jumps himself in. They're gonna go for this. The RP already used up on Tame Amal. The mechanism comes out though, and Tame Amal did not die. Can't turn it around, but has no dragon form. Aegis is already burned, and Chandra's guys burst as well. Relax. They are fighting back. They take down a Magnus. They take down a Weaver, and they just took three kills. Split push is happening. Trixie did take down the tier 3 tower, tries to teleport himself out, and will not be able to do it. The smoke comes in. They should be able to take this as well. That means that there is only one survivor to tell the tale. It is Fly who made himself teleport out. The courier even gets picked up. I mean, that's just total massacre in the middle lane where Relax don't lose anything apart from their tier 3 bottom. Brilliant fight coming out from them. Absolutely perfect initiation from the clockwork as well. He knew that as soon as the Magnus went in, he had to go in as well. Because otherwise you just lose your Dragon Knight, which is a huge amount of their AoE damage in that. If he hadn't have gone in, and if he hadn't have gotten the Weaver in that, they would have lost that fight really badly. So Shaklo, really, really nice hook shot there. And having the mech on his team as well, he's really concentrating on just, you know, making sure his team can get to the point where their Midas's pay off really, really well. Because... Like we, like you said before, they they do have way more Midas's than the side of Fnatic. They're working with five now, yes. which I have five Midas's. I've Everybody seen four. Has Everybody has one, and there's two on the side of Fnatic. I mean, 
it's arguable that Ricky is probably the hardest carry here yeah. to an extent. I mean, Dragon Weaver can Knight get away actually. from him, but it's all about execution. Well, Dragon Knight's... Dragon Knight's a weird one as far as like how his carry potential goes. He can get to a point eventually where he's just like virtually invincible, but he farms so slow, like as naturally as a hero. Yeah, I guess they have bought themselves some time. I feel like if Fnatic wants to go again, they probably have to wait for the for the ages again because what just happened is something that they cannot afford to have happen again. Because if this yeah, fight, it's a really if, if significant they, blow. Yeah, if they lose next fight, they might lose Roshan. After that as well, and with Roshan on the side of Relax, there's no way for that I can make it into the base for the next six minutes. And the longer it takes, the more, of course, those Midas's on the side of Relax are paying off. I mean, the gold graph is still in favor of Fnatic, still by quite a substantial amount, but it is going back towards the zero line. It went from almost uh, 13k back to about 9-ish k. Talking about the experience graph, well, that looks a bit more drastic. Because, I mean... There haven't been that many kills this game overall. I mean, we're 30 minutes in. We do. I, I say that, and we have got 26 kills. I realize that, but four of those happened just now. And yeah. four kills up on Fnatic that was ahead in experience, so Relax took down higher level targets. They just got themselves a really large chunk of experience going their way. Yeah, it's a really, really big turn for them. And I think a bit of that was because Fnatic really overdid things there. They, there was no reason for them to jump in the base there and then. And one thing is that their item build doesn't really suit uh, on the Weaver, I mean. Their item build there doesn't really suit uh, trying to break the base right now or trying to end the game right now. Because as far as early game cost-effective damage right here, right now, Desolator way better than picking up a Manta style which is more of a... it scales very very well with a few other items but on its own doesn't do a huge amount. Uh, it does make him very survivable though, it's very very hard to pick him off but Relax have also picked up the gem now I believe. It's on the Ricky I think it was on last? I don't know who it's on now. Oh Clockwork. Clockwork. Clock, is, Clock is holding the gem. So they took the gem from that, as you said a ton of experience. They still don't have map control which is something that Fnatic's team is really good at taking oh, but this, they'll eventually get it. With Sorry? Necronomicon units and with Treants, these ranged racks are already down to 370 health, and Fnatic can just keep sending those in. That's just oh such God. an annoying thing. That's that so it, won't, cruel. it won't regen, but it's just so annoying. And even Ricky had to take the melee Necronomicon unit and had to heal from it afterwards again. That's just yeah. one of the more annoying things. Yeah, really interesting change, actually, because, I mean... The, the both the racks used to regen just very slightly I think I can't remember exactly what it was but the way that now you can choose to focus down a ranged racks if you really really need to take something now or to do just some little bit of chip damage and it can really really hurt over time I mean the range racks isn't a huge difference but imagine if they do keep on doing that you know if imagine if Fnatic can't break the base but they manage to take out all the range racks things become very difficult indeed if all of the lanes can have those in and even with one in it's always going to push naturally towards you then so that thing makes things pretty hard for us to the side of relax yeah, the, the Fnatic uh, lineup I mean their split push is just it's still going to be very annoying no matter what stage of the game this is no matter how many hands of my decision you build that split push, there's very little that Relax can do uh, do against that. The gold graph is still creeping back Radiant's upwards though, I mean they're still gaining attack. momentum in terms of, you know, map control. But it, it's, it's not easy, I mean they're constantly forced back to base. At some point you'd hope that Relax is gonna be the one to initiate because, you know, they can keep defending their base but they have to at some point also be the ones to initiate and especially if Fnatic is threatening Roshan, which by the looks of it, they seem to do. We'll be up in about a minute and a bit less than that. Then, you know, they're okay. They can try and con like contest Roshan. Great. If they do that, they'll have to deal with the Nature's Prophet pushing on bottom. So you know, they can choose take an Aegis or t lose your ra uh, lose your Rex or don't lose your Rex but give an Aegis to Fnatic, with which they might be able to take your Rex anyway. Yeah, they're going to have to wait until uh, things start getting closer to the Aegis actually coming up, and they're going to have to gank Trixie. I would say that's pretty much their only option with it. They do have a really good hero for doing it, though, because 
Clockwork, an excellent, excellent counter to the Nature's Prophet, but they're already on their way there, and Clockwork is not going to be there, so they're going to try for the Roche instead. Yeah, let's see though, because, I mean, top lane is getting pushed in right now. We do have the Roshan up. The Familiars do scout it out. And the Hookshot goes in. He catches out Era. That's a good one to have, but he's still able to time lapse. No smoke coming in in time, but though the smoke is in time to pick up the Ricky Lincoln's pop. Era, Soul Assumption, might be in some trouble. Doesn't have a time lapse anymore. Runs for his life right now. Nature's Prophet is already back on the bottom lane, taking the racks. As Era still gets picked up by Nexus. Double kill for him. No tail on Honey making themselves out of there, but bottom lane, Rage Rex dead. Trixie finding up against KSI with his BKB turned on, gets himself a kill on the Venomancer, starts on Nexus, but I don't think he's able to make that out. Nice Prout, but in comes the smoke, and that's not gonna be Trixie making it out alive of that one. But they do take the Rage Rex. I do think that Relax is gonna pick up the Roshan with this, though. I mean, there's still a Magnus with a Blink RP, which is still very scary. But he'd suicide for that if he does that, unless there's buybacks happening right now, which there are, and so... I guess this is probably one of the better scenarios that Relax could have had. Definitely. If the they Magnus get the Roshan, can still is. maybe stop them take the Roshan. It's all about whether they take this Roshan. If they don't take this, they still haven't really achieved anything other than losing their own Rax, which is not great. Oh, oh shot. shot. Magnus turns on his BKB, tries to teleport himself out. Don't think he'll make it, though. Too much damage coming out with help of the Dragon Knight. Roshan's still alive, but... I doubt it's going to be for long. Now also, I mean, Weaver was back up, but without an RP, well, that's hopeless. Yeah, this is now their Roshan. Very, very plain and simple. And one issue in that fight is that it, it, it looks to me like the Weaver shouldn't have actually gone for a Lincoln Sphere this game. Because a BKB, you could turn it on in the cloud, and then you're no longer silenced. You'll no longer have the mischance. And really, in this game, it feels like he needed the ability to stand and fight more than do what you normally think of a weaver as doing which is sort of move around the fight pick people off a lot like the ricky is doing and the ricky's going for a bkb i think so yeah he, he already, already has, has one and that's still now has the ages gold. And that's yeah still so he could stand and fight he can stand and fight era if he gets caught for a second you saw it he got caught he got out twice from being caught he got out of the smoke cloud and he got out of the cogs and he continued running and still died he doesn't feel strong enough to actually fight the side of Relax, which is funny because he was one of the highest farmers, but he's now falling behind the Ricky. Yeah, Ricky is proving to be, uh, well, I, 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 like, he's proving to be a real menace in this game. Like, gems or not, I do believe that Fnatic has picked up a second gem. Yeah, they have got one on no-till again, so, you know, they, they've got them, their self, is that the same gem that they had, actually? It looks like it might be, because it's picked up by Fly again? No, it's a different one. Fly bought himself No, it's a different gem. gem. He's, they have two gems now bought by Fly, so yeah. he, I bet he's having fun with that. <laughs> yeah. You said the, you said before yesterday, it's always really upsetting when uh, someone loses your stuff. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> if two gems are lost, you're like, okay, I'm not buying you anymore, guys. Be careful with I'm my gonna stuff. I'm going to go play, yeah, I'm going to go play some other game. Yeah. He'll League just stop. Legends doesn't have gems, does it? <laughs> I don't even know. I, I've oh. played like three games of League, and that game's art style hurt my eyes. Ugh. Well, to be honest, I mean, with the with the gem, we're up uh, or again up on on Fnatic. I mean, they they have got fighting potential again. I mean, Nexus, he is definitely a scary one to deal with. But if he doesn't, like his initiation is definitely needed. Also. Unless Clockwork gets some good hooks, which, by the way, I have to... Uh, we, you mentioned it earlier. Boom, but his hook shot, hot shots, multiples, have been really on point. He is making sure that there is no reason why Ricky cannot come into the fight. Gem or no gem. Yeah, and what he's doing special with his hook shots is not just hooking in. You're, you're seeing five heroes and going, let's go, and just finding somebody. He's finding the right target each time. He's gotten the Weaver, he's gotten people escaping like the Magnus that one time. He's really having a good game so far. He's, I mean, there's no, you know, super amazing hook shots. It's not like the, the skill is super hard to hit, I don't think, but he's certainly picking out the right targets in this fight, and that's something that's really, really essential because. Getting in and then putting on your power cog can really break Fnatic's team apart. And I feel like Fnatic want to sort of go in as a group because they have that Magnus RP. So they want to just sort of clash with the side of Relax, RP them, and then fight. Yeah. But rip the, co the cogs aren't allowing them to do that. The hooks aren't allowing them to do that. That was really, uh, really sharp play from him. And even though they've lost one one lane of, of range racks, 
A fanatic seem a bit hesitant to go in again. Why would be too if you're gonna go up against Ricky with an Aegis? Fair enough. Oh, uh, what's that? One team I, has I know exactly who this is. Alliance? But I don't want to spoil it for the chat. Because they have to try and guess. Which one? Which, what was the question exactly? Which team has won four times with Ricky? Yeah. In this patch? I. Yeah, I'm. Well, I don't know if it's or, this patch. I would guess it's this patch. Nahaz talks about this patch mostly. I, I know who it is for certain. I know exactly who it is. But yeah, I don't want to spoil it for chat. Like, I can just say, yeah, I could. I, I knew that too, you know? It's got to be Alliance. Well, yeah, Alliance is the only too. other team to run that hero, like, often. But they, did they actually run it in 6.79? Yeah, they, I'm sure they did. I don't know, actually. Now I feel bad. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm going to feel like an idiot. I should have well, just not said and then been like, whoever it was, if it was friggin... My carry is so kawaii. Ah, there it's not we go. Alliance. It's oh not Alliance, so you didn't the know. Second guess, it's my carry is so kawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really think it's them. I, what? I can't believe it's not them. Oh, Who the hell is it? They haven't picked it that often. It has to be an Asian team, I think. Oh, well. He has, an, he has, he has to have an Aghanim. Yeah. No! Wow! Well, 40 seconds. I guess it's still not that long, but in the meantime, his hookshot on cooldown cannot initiate mid lane. And with another lane bear of a tier 3 tower, that split push is coming, gonna come into play again. The Necronomicons and the, from, and the Treants, they'll pick those wrecks up, those ranged wrecks, sooner or later. Yeah, you've gotta I... be really desperate to hook creeps yes. without an Aghanim Scepter. Like, that's that's pretty worrying. And that DK had the ulti on, I'm not sure that was necessary, but it, it'll, it'll be up again soon. It's almost, Yeah, it's up again in another 3 or 4 seconds, so... 40 seconds is is pretty much the point in which you can kind of spam your ultimate. I mean, it's not Timbersaw level spam, but it's pretty close. I have to say, I mean, the BKBs on the side of Relax are both still 10 minutes. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Oh god, 10 minute BKBs. <laughs> that would be so boring. I wouldn't want to play Dota anymore if we could get that. Jesus. Oh, that would yeah, be I horrible. Think the, uh, I think Tame My Wild has just picked up an AC as well. Yes, he has. Relax is... Heroes are getting really farmed at this point, and... I'm not sure Fnatic have got the heroes to deal with them in a fight. They do, however, still have one thing special, which is what trixie has been doing pretty much on his own. The Weaver hasn't done it as much, but that's their split push, and they have amazing split push potential. Yeah. Now, I do see Venomans are trying to counter that a bit. He picked up a Necronomicon level 3 as well as Boots of Travel, so... His mobility is there. I'm not... Like, he's not gonna be coming anywhere close to the potential of an Age of Prophet, but at least... He has a chance to defend or at least delay the push and hope that his teammates make it yeah. in time to help him out as well. Oddly enough, that's Relax's second pair of boots of travel. The first is on, like you said, the Venomancer, the other is on the Clockwork. So he ah. actually went for boots of travel, so he's like the fastest hero in the world. EG? EG? I was that's not, not an Asian team. I wouldn't have, no, I wouldn't have guessed that one at all. Like, that wouldn't have even Greedy been Neck. Favorite. You're a smart man. Yeah, like you whoever are. that is in the chat. Must I don't know that. He probably lives with EG. Yeah, I don't, so I don't, wouldn't know that. Oh, kudos. I mean, I didn't know that. I thought it was Alliance. Well, yeah, we, we heard that. Shut up. Don't make me feel bad. <laughs> well, we've got an Abyss already on the Ricky, so his initiation is going to be even more scary. I mean, Relax is still hoping for Frenetic to make a move. Because then they can reply to the aggression of Fnatic and just take them out and then just push, can't push. Well, wait a second, what are you doing there by yourself? Shaklo, he runs for it, but he gets proud up. Silas up, the mechanism comes out, he will end up going down. A gem falls and Fly will finally get his own gem back. Yay! And this, without a clockwork, he has to buy back. He cannot buy back. This will be a fight without the buyback. And with gems, their initiation is just very weak. At least they take a tier Dyer's 1 bottom and get some gold out of it, but he needs to go back home right now. Tame my wild, you are needed in your team on the top lane. Familiar's already getting picked up, or at least one of them. Era is actually going on as well. Poor we a Nova. Tame my wild the doesn't have TP. There's no TP on Tame my wild. He's gonna have to eat or sell his cheese. Sell his cheese. He drops it. I would just eat it. I mean, is he? He's sending the courier to go and pick it up in the meantime. All right, he's got a cheese delivery service. Awesome. Yeah, that could have been really bad and. Their tier, th their last tier three tower is looking pretty low at this point. Yes. Fnatic, it feels to me like Fnatic can't outfight them, but they can just outmaneuver the side of Relax at the moment. They don't have 
the best heroes for moving around the map, whereas Fnatic have Weaver and they have Nature's Prophet. The other heroes on Fnatic's side are just there as backup and to try and provide something in the team fights. It'll be all about whether Relax gets that good fight that they need. They need to try and go for a smoke gank, but it's very hard to do when you're being split pushed because it's very obvious when you're smoking. If uh, if you smoke with five people, whilst one of the one or two lanes is pushing in, it's pretty obvious what you're doing. Yes. Yeah, that does kind of tell the tale. I'm, I'm still surprised Shackle got himself caught out. I'm also surprised that Fnatic didn't put more pressure on uh, on the top lane, but. We'll see. We'll also see what Relax is planning on doing. They still, of course, got the Venomancer pushing out bottom. Nature's Prophet is there. The drawing actually comes out from Shaklo saying that's where Fnatic is. So he's not entirely wrong, or at least No Till is in there as well as, uh, as we also have got Hani there, but they don't have every everybody. So we'll see. Roshan is back up again, though. And that's something that Relax will want to take, or at least not give away. It is reason to fight. Hello, Fly. Nexus finds him. Fly does have that gem, though. Have to be careful, he has the gem that he took from the clockwork. Yeah, the Fly will mostly him. be able to get away, he has a four staff, but if he gets bashed up, or even if they use the Abyssal Blade on him, he would die very oh. fast, so he has to be a little bit careful. That's the most But Fnatic, I mean... Thing. Sorry. What was... sorry? What happened? Well... Venomancer, the counter pusher, was counter pushing, popped his Necronomicon unit, and Enchant was things. Hey, creep! Enchant! Ooh, shut up! The meantime, Rubik dies to the Ricky, but we're gonna see if this uh, honey can turn things around right here. Right here, he does have an RP. Oh, he gets a pistol to the damage. It's too much. You're dead. Double kill for Nexus. In the meantime, though, middle lane range racks, melee racks, both on the seat. Melee already dead. Hookshot comes in. He reaches no deal. The hex up on air. In the meantime, the damage is enough to take him down as well. Weaver dies. No deal. Is able to teleport himself out on the high ground. 3-0 still, but they get the Rex. Exactly what you said. Relax is able to outfight Fnatic, but Fnatic is just everywhere at once, and they're able to take Rex whenever they are able to just reach the base. And Shaq Lomas is hooked shut up on Trixie. Yeah, and this is really an issue with playing against teams like Fnatic, like Alliance. This team invented Rat Dota. They invented avoiding you and just killing your base. And that's exactly what they just did there. Relax, they need to try and get a hold of these heroes. I think they're going to have to split up, to be honest. It's it's at the point where you have to go for something desperate, where you have to... Oh, well, this might be an opening for them. They do have buyback on both the Nature's Prophet and the Weaver. If uh, Relax tried to force anything here, but their lane on the bottom lane is going to be pushed out again. And if Veno gets... I mean, he's just dropped his poison over just to stop the creep wave. Yeah, that's insane. But he has to. It's understandable, I guess. Yeah, Noto, he needs way, to hold this lane. Room. Is there- where is- oh, there's still a gem on the clockwork again, so if Noto comes close, he'll die. But looks like he's just gonna go bottom, and I think he might be able to pick up, uh... Can he actually kill KSI on a one-on-one -on -one fight with it? Look at that! Diffusal Blade! It can take care of the Necronomicon units, can it not? Yeah, yeah, it instantly kills them off. I'm yes. not sure if you take the damage from it. I think, I think you do. Think not sure. Do. Yeah. Well, Roshan taken. By relax, so that's good for them. They're actually up on Shaklo, knowing that without his initiation they cannot fight. They take the tier 2 as well, meaning that there's only one tier 2 left standing on the side of Fnatic, which is the bottom one. And it really looks, by the way, like relax really likes long games. But this is yesterday too. Yeah, they seem comfortable with it, which given they're a team that generally play a very aggressive style of Dota, which is it's kind of interesting. Well, not, not very aggressive, but they play a very team fight orientated yes. style. Which is kind of unusual because generally the teams that want to go later are teams that are particularly efficient at farming or particularly efficient at, um, at split pushing and stuff. We don't really see much in the way of uh, team fight teams except since like that was like a TI2 thing where everyone would just farm for like 40 minutes and then be like we're going to have the best team fight ever and win. That was like what everybody did. But not really common now. Unfortunately for us. Well, well, sort of, but it does mean that we don't get to see Morphling anymore, which is kind of good, because Radiance there was a thousand games of Morphling. Yeah. Seattle was ruled by Morphling. True. Morphling Pretty scary. Range. Yeah. And Naga. That was like it. Tier 3 tower! Dead! That was the last one. And that's just Treyons and Necronomicon units. Slow but steady. It's such a... It's just slow poison coming out from Fnatic. And... You know, though, they didn't invite Red Dota because the reason it's called Red Dota is because it's Red in the Dark that started it. Or that the name came really? from. Really? 
I swear it was NS that called them uh, called Fnatic rats at a LAN. Yes. I thought it was that. They did, but they only did it because rats okay. are come comes from rat in the dark, I believe. Because why otherwise really? would they be rats? Because but rats themselves, thought... the animal doesn't really like rats are like otherwise it would be mouse Dota, turtle Dota. No, I thought I thought NS was just like I hate you guys basically. <laughs> I don't know. I thought, I thought it was. I swear it's rat Dota. I don't think Rat in the Dark are involved. I thought that's I like thought too obscure a team to be involved. Does that team even exist anymore, or yeah, are they, they under were a different like name? EMS at that point, or something. Yeah, but do they exist anymore? Oh, and were they like form that bigger stolen team? by Fly? Fly already telekinesis. He hasn't turned on his BKB just yet. There's still a 10 second. He turns it on right now. Jesus, that one hit almost killed a Fly. Sorry for cursing there. Dragon Tail coming out on air. In comes an RP though. Catches both Shackle and Tame Wild. Can they take him down? Is there enough damage? The mechanism comes out. In comes the Poison Nova. The Cavalry has arrived. Down goes Hani. Buyback from the Weaver in the meantime. Buyback, it does not happen for Hani. He's already done his RP anyway. No tail. It goes down here as well. Fly trying to make it back to base. He has still got his four stuff. Will be fine, but his racks are not fine. Or will they be? In the meantime, Trixie has got some company because Weaver with the boots of travel, they're bashing on the tier 4s, it has become a base race, Aegis still burn off, they're gonna go for the tier 4s here as well, screw the racks, go for the towers, go for those tier 4s, go for the throne, who has the faster push, is it gonna be Era and Trixie with the both, of, both of them, or the 5 heroes of Relax? Hani, Skewer, try to delay it, they need to go for the Rex right here, the tier 4 though, still dead on the side of Relax as well, this should be the game of Relax, indeed they take it, they take it home, Fnatic lose a game here, a Starlight of Star series, it started out so well for them, but the 5 Midas's, they pay off, I can't believe Rex and Relax actually taken that, oh my god. Yeah, both the Weaver and for the majority of the fight, the Nature's Prophet, decide to go for the enemy base. And the fact is, is they're not a tiny, they didn't have a Desolator or anything like that, so they couldn't kill the base fast enough. I mean, base races are always just a heartbreaking decision to make, because you know if you screw it up, you just lose there and then, and it's one tiny decision. Fnatic lose that after being ahead vast majority of the game. Nice play from the side of Relax, though. Really, really nice play. Yeah, we're gonna jump ourselves to uh, Fnatic taking on Alliance. Let's see if they have more luck against the Swedes. And uh, that game is already behind schedule, so we are not gonna have a very long break. So stick around, because Fnatic versus Alliance will be our next blockbuster of the evening. <laughs> 